In this video, we're going to take a look at Photoshop with uh, architecture in mind, and we're going to turn a uh, swatch and overlay into a useful tool to help show something that might come across originally as kind of cartoony uh, with little emphasis to something that's a little more artistic with some emphasis on whatever features you would like. So what I've done is I've searched the internet for a color palette and I've dragged across the file into Photoshop from the download. And here I've chosen a beach color palette. And what you're gonna learn to do is, first of all, take out the hue and saturation uh, be in your old images and then replace them with an overlay that will allow certain elements to be colored according to the color palette. So here we go. So with the swatches uh, right here uh, in this uh, file, I have them at the bottom and I've just turned them off. Once again, you just drag them in. But what we see is that the sky, the soil uh, section that I have here, and then also the uh, textured material that I brought in from SketchUp is all currently uh, their own unique colors and hues. So what I'm gonna do is first, take these items and I'm gonna put them into a folder and I'm gonna call that folder, call, call that folder, color uh, elements. Now I just know that these are my colored elements. I'm going to then apply a hue and saturation effect to just this folder. And to do that, I'm gonna hover between the two and press alt and I'm going to associate that hue and saturation just to that folder. I'm going to then take out the saturation in those images, and I can also make them a little bit lighter if I would like as well. And I close that out. I have my color palette. I'm just going to throw that to the top, turn that on. Now that it's at the top, it no longer has the hue and saturation effect uh, associated with it. Also, if it was at the bottom, because I made the one element assigned to this folder by holding out Alt, it also is not affected. I'm going to throw that to the top. The next thing I want to do is add an overlay over everything that's in the folder as well. I'm going to make everything pretty much the same color. Uh, so what I'm going to do is make a new layer. I'm going to drag that below the color palette. I'm just going to call this its color. And I'm going to um, take my layer, my beach color palette, and use an eyedropper tool on it. Shortcut for that is an I. And I'm gonna just select one of these colors here. I'm gonna go on my base color layer, go to the paint bucket. If you don't see it, you have to hit the file menu, click paint bucket tool. I want you to paint the base color on there. And then we're going to change that to an overlay effect. And then now that has been overlaid onto the folder of color elements. I'm going to assign that base color just to the color elements folder. So when I turn that off, you can see it. Now that we have our base color, um, I have a layer here that I call selection. And what that looks like is just the, um, just the line work from SketchUp. You can do the same thing with your selection by just using like a polygon lasso tool and just selecting out regions that you want uh, to be colorized. So essentially what I'm doing is using this selection layer to quickly select with the magic wand some different elements that I want. I'm gonna hold down shift so I can magic wand multiple things at one time. And now that I have that, those elements selected, so here I'm selecting the brick veneer wall on the first level and also the foundation wall in the basement. Uh, I'm going to create my own layer with it. Um, and so what I could do is control J to jump a copy of this layer up. When I turn everything else off, you can see that I still have this kind of foundation that I can select later. I'm gonna call this foundation wall and brick selection. And I'm just gonna throw this right here. Uh, above the base color with my color palette. 
I'm going to identify a color that I would like those to be. I'm going to then create a, uh, or I'm going to select on this layer. I'm going to then use the uh, paint bucket tool and color that. And actually, I want to inverse that, so edit, undo, and let's color those elements. Now that we have those colored, we can then also select the overlay effect. And we can see that we've colored those elements in. Now, here I can see that there's a few things that are off. So what I'm going to go through and do is, is edit those. And you can see how I'm going to do that right now. So I'm going to use the polygon selection tool. And I'm going to zoom in with Control Plus. I'm going to select over an area that I want to duplicate this color in this corner. I'm going to use my clone stamp tool. Hold down Alt, select the element there, make this a little bit bigger. Now color that in. Pressing Alt to redefine where we're referencing. And then we connect Control D to deselect. And I did that on the foundation wall layer. I can see the same thing has happened over here. I'm going to zoom in even more. Use the brackets to make my, paint, uh, my clone stamp a little bit smaller. Hold on Alt. And there we go. Control minus to zoom out. And now there's one other thing I need to do here. Now that I've colored this, I want to select my soil magic wand. Now I have this edge right here. I'm going to do Control Shift I to invert that selection. And then now I can go up to my foundation wall color and use the eraser, make the bracket bigger. I'm gonna choose a harder edged eraser and I'm going to erase out this edge. Once again, I've selected the soil and I inversed my selection so that way I have a nice clean edge to work with here. So that way it looks like my foundation wall is just coming out of that edge. And I can hit Control D to be select, Control minus to zoom out. And we're all good. The next thing I'll do is I'll bring in some people and I'm going to colorize them according to the palette as well. So to get the people, I've already downloaded them. I'm going to go to File and I'm going to go to Place, Embedded. And here I have people looking up. I'm gonna to go to place. I'm gonna hold down control or shift and uniformly scale these people down to a size that looks appropriate with the building. And I'm looking at their feet and I'm gonna hit enter. And with these people, first I need to rasterize the layer. And then with these people, I'm going to do a hue and saturation effect, hold down Alt, assign it to the people. With this, I'm going to unsaturate the people. And I'm going to make them a little bit lighter. And then with these people looking up, I can then take a, uh, a color and new layer <clears throat> and the layers assigned to the people looking up. I'm going to use a uh, paint bucket to color. So I'm going to go to the beach color palette, the eyedropper tool. I'm going to click on the eyedropper tool, select the color I want, go back to the layer associated to the people and use the paint bucket and just paint that. And here we can see that they turn gray because they're under the hue and saturation. I'm going to move that up above them 
and then I'm going to assign uh, this to a <clears throat> overlay effect so that way we can still see the texture of the people uh, throughout. And then I want to make it look like a few of these people standing in the grass. I'm going to have just the one guy's foot on the very edge standing on the dirt here. So then all I have to do is go to the eraser tool, use the brackets to make it smaller, and choose a fuzzy brush. And to do that, we're just gonna kind of hide the bottom of their feet. Oops. Make sure we're on the right layer. And go to the people looking up layer. I'm just gonna hide their feet there so it looks like they're in the grass. I'm gonna do the same thing with this guy's left foot. And to add some depth, we have his right sneaker uh, kind of coming out here. And then when we turn off our beach color palette, we can see that we've started to take all of these more cartoony looking uh, elements and add a certain color palette to the entire drawing, making them look um, a little more artistic. Uh, we can add emphasis in certain areas. So for this example, uh, the emphasis is on the uh, foundation wall of the building that is to be constructed, let's say, and also the brick facade. Uh, I could have then instead made these blue and added emphasis to, let's say, the corrugated steel decking or the K-joys uh, or the concrete or maybe just to the people in general. So it's a good way to make your drawings look artistic, but then yet um, have emphasis in the areas that you would like or uniformity uh, or however you would like to, uh, to blend your images together. Um, I find it a lot more useful than using the default colors that come in from uh, a collection of different files that you might be placing because uh, it tends to look a little cartoony uh, when you do that. Don't forget to save and subscribe.